Hey man. On it, that is just walking around. Oh my gosh, you're really just right here in front of me. This cat's so cute. My colleague actually recommended this to me and I believe the lion's coming. Oh no, okay. Both along. And my colleague recommended this to me. I've had a blast so far. Um, everyone's so friendly. Like everyone has cameras. So I'm not like the odd one out just filming myself. Everyone is taking pictures. The staff here are really nice as well. Like they ask you if you want to take a picture. Well they ask you um, if you want them to take a picture or close up with the with the with the with the, with the cats. So I think that's super cool. But yeah, as I always say in every kind of vlog, so far, so good. I'm enjoying myself. Um more to come. 
of course there's going to be content in terms of um you've seen the animals but yeah so far so good onwards and upwards i'm gonna go and look for more cats in this place but have a great time guys Closure, but I'm not trying to touch her. No. Um, to go into her personal space, I mean, I, the way I explain to people who don't quite get it is very similar to kind of dogs. You know, if you've got a small dog who's worried and someone reaches into their space, that's actually perceived as a very rude gesture. See, we have two forward facing eyes, we are a predator. I know whether we intend it to be friendly or not, it is perceived as a threatening gesture and they're going to react accordingly. If she's got the, have, got to have the guts to live alongside a lion, She's got big guns. Exactly. And she's going to act towards any predator who does get in her space. So when you do see it on social media, everyone always posts the best of their life on social media. They don't post the, the time they, they fell, the fell off. <laughs> you know, they don't post those things. They post the really cool bits. So, so what we end up happening eyes. is, you know, people get themselves it's into a situation. Really they pay 15 grand for something that's going to try and kill them. Uh, Realise it is going to try and kill them and try to give it, sell it on to someone else just as stupid as them. Um, <laughs> well, that's why people buy the, the big cats as well because they're really stupid. Yeah, and obviously there are lots of people who are capable of looking after them. Don't yeah. get it wrong. Yeah, yeah. But often people see the nice bits on social media, yeah, yeah, yeah. think that they can replicate that in their flat, and those cats then are not having a good life. No. <laughs> yeah. I want to get a seat because. Apparently there is a demonstration at 5.40 so I'm trying to get a seat but it looks like everything's occupied right now. is about to be attacked by an anti-poaching dog to see what these guys do in the wild. Uh, what do you think of Cam's outfit everyone? <laughs> Lovely, excellent. Uh, it's, it's, it's an incredible show so make sure you do step in, come in nice and close so uh, we get to see. Thank you, Jags. We're good. Cam's ready. <laughs> he looks so ready. Over to, I mean, is this man gorgeous or not? He is. He's a beautiful conservation leader of animal saving animals. Over to you, Daryl Bliss. <laughs> Woo! There's not one you can say to that, is there really? <laughs> okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the demonstration by Animal Saving Animals. What are we? We're a conservation organisation that supplies anti-poaching dogs, tracker dogs and protection dogs to the conservation sector to assist in the reduction of wildlife crime. We're currently in five countries in Africa, three countries in South America and we're working in India and Europe as well. So in a minute you're going to see the first section of the demonstration which looks like a zip line going down. It's actually not. It's actually just a static line. And what we're going to do is under control, we're going to bring the dog down that line. Why do we need to do this? Um, very simply, in a lot of the reserves we work in, say for instance, the Nyasa in Mozambique, after the rainy seasons have come, um, seven tenths of the reserve is underwater and can be flooded. So we still have to move around the reserve. We still have to be able to put the dogs into the areas we need to put them into. So we have boats, obviously, to move them around. But if we're crossing a river, we're never going to cross the river by putting the dog into the river itself because the, the, the rivers have crocodiles in them, okay? And they're various species that are going to take the dogs. So they always have to be moved across on a static line. To demonstrate this today, we've obviously moved, we put a line down to the back of the vehicle. And what you're going to see is obviously the handler will come down the wall because we need to bring the handler down and the dog will run down the static line under control. The dog's in a six point harness, which is pretty much the safest harness you can put a dog into. And in regards to support of the dog itself, it supports all the major parts of the body. And you'll see when the dog is moving down, there's no pressure on the spine, there's no pressure on any part of the body. It's actually a very comfortable harness to, harness to wear when he's moving down. So what you're going to see now is first of all, Darren the handler will come down and we're attaching the dog onto the line. Oh, 
See, they're perfectly comfortable. They don't mind. They really do not mind being down there at all. Um, they're used to this. Trust me. Can So that looks like quite a jolt when the dog's going over the top. I can honestly say the amount of times that we have a training wall at the training establishment, when the, the amount of times we take the dog to the top of the wall, we put them on a safety line when we connect them so they can't drop, the amount of times we have dogs literally will just jump off the top of the wall and actually they'll just free suspend in the air because they know what's happening when they get to the bottom. Thank you very much, Cameron. Cameron's been an absolute star today because we actually had a, a train decoy we had for the demonstration. He's not been able to make it, and Cameron has really kindly agreed to step in for the next couple of days. So now both dogs are going to move back up to the top of the wall. Again, if you look, their tails are wagging. Uh, actually, when it, Blitz is going up, that's Blitz is going up now. His tails wagging. They actually really enjoy going over. So. How do we else to deploy a dog? You see a static line going across. Obviously, remember if we were in a conservation, in a conservancy, this would be a straight line across, and the dog would be pulled across the river because of the steepness of the drop. Obviously, there's quite a bit of free fall in regards to actually controlling the dog coming down. So another way we deploy is we have helicopters that will actually um, we can move the dogs from to an area we need them to move them to. So if you're looking at an area, say in the Nyasa Reserve. 3,000 square kilometres, the LNC in Kenya, 400 square kilometres, Save Valley in Zimbabwe, 1,600 kilometres. So it's not going to be possible to move them to an area in the time limit we need, in the time um, frames that we have to move them to. So if we have a poaching incident, we ideally want to get those dogs to location within 20 minutes. How do we do that? We do with a helicopter. Now, a lot of the time we have dense scrub, we can't actually move them. Um, by any other means, so we use the helicopter. Now, what we do is we'll have an abseil line coming out, and the dog's now ready. This is actually our quick reaction force, which is not very quick. So as we said, the dog's held between the legs on a six-point harness, and the handlers then go over. Okay, Darren's now getting ready to go over as a, a second handler. The helicopter will hover above the ground. They'll literally drop smoke um, to disguise them actually coming down, and then the dog will go over. So Darren's now getting ready now. Soon. <laughs> helicopter still hovering. Still hovering. So, okay, how are the dogs acting? Well, actually waiting, because this is going to be a long job, I feel, at the moment. <laughs> so the dogs have three areas of training. They're trained search, track, and attack. So in regards to search, what we've often found is that people will enter the conservancy, they'll hide weapons on the conservancy, because that's the key item. If they're arrested with it, they're going to be put down for a heavy sentence of about 10 to 12 years. So they'll hide the weapon, they'll do the poaching, and then they'll put the weapon back in hiding. So all of these dogs are actually trained to, to search. On top of that, they're trained to track. So in any area, both urban and rural, in all weather conditions, the dog will actually track the assailant. And then if necessary, they'll then do the attack. Bear in mind, if they were coming out of a helicopter, the helicopter would have run out of fuel by now. We'll be heading back. Take time. Right, we're ready to go. Oh, wow. Okay, they're coming down now. The smoke comes out as well. Darren's getting ready to go now. Cameron, if you want to just stay there a second, Cameron. Dog's now coming down. You notice how the dog is already looking for Cameron. <laughs> and they're both contented. They're both happy coming down. So they reach the ground. They have to clip out of harness. Which may take some time as well. Both the dogs are now looking for the decoy. The decoy is hiding behind the tent. As soon as the decoy comes out, they're going to they're want to hit him. <laughs> Okay, Darren, give me the okay when you're ready. Tom, if you could face the right way, that would help. <laughs> Believe it or not, we trained for months for this. Imagine what we'd be like if you didn't. Okay, you're ready to go. Cameron, if you come out. There we go. Both the dogs. Fire a couple of shots, Cam. When you ready? Oh. 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 Wow. 
So what you have to do now is you have to look at Cameron's face. Every so often, his face is going to change. That's a really nice bite. And as trainers, we aspire to this. So the first dog's been called off. Tom, if you go in. Now, Delta's in training. So see how Delta is spinning around to avoid getting taken off the suit? Because she loves the suit. Okay, there we go. Tom, you ready? Cameron, we'll put you in the car. Okay, this is Delta's moment. Now, this morning she messed up her moment. <laughs> so, the object of this is a vehicle attack. Where does this come from? We had an incident in Zimbabwe about four years ago where we, we caught a, a, beep, uh, a bush meat poaching gang. And after questioning, they informed us that they were meeting the middleman. The middleman is always the person we want because he's the one who's then trading the arms on preferred value. So we knew where they were meeting. He arrived in a car. We had an ambush set up. We had the police and we had the dog teams and all the anti-poaching rangers there waiting for him. As he got out of the car, one of the police broke early, which we believe to be um, deliberate. And he ran back to the car and actually went to drive off. One of the handlers in his quick thinking then released his dog. The dog went through the window of the car and actually apprehended the middleman. And he's now on a, having serving a 12 year sentence in Zimbabwe. So this is something now that we put into our training because we realized it was actually quite a valuable asset. However, this morning, or every other time we've done this, because obviously she's still in training, she's jumped straight through the window. This morning, she just put her paws on the window and looked through. <laughs> So it wasn't the most successful apprehension, but we're going with it. She is under training, so we'll see how it goes. Okay, Cameron, do you want to do the funky chicken? <laughs> there we go, are you ready? Oh, well done. So Tom and I'll stand back, call her off. There we go, call her back. Well done. Just want to put her onto a lead. Just hold it there a second. Just hold it there a second. This is actually quite a special dog because about a year ago, um, this, uh, um, Tom was working in Spain while he was training and the dog was left with a friend and they have a really, really close relationship as, as handler and dog. Tom had to go out for work for the day. The dog was left with a friend. The friend opened the door and the dog escaped. So they were in, they were in Spain. Tom was obviously completely distraught and spent the next 10 days searching for this dog. And we thought we'd, we'd actually thought we'd lost the dog. He got to the stage where it was kind of went viral over the internet. Everybody was kind of looking for this dog. 10 days later, Tom returned to his own house and found the dog waiting on the doorstep. And he had traveled 110 miles across a national park and across a mountain range to actually get back to him. So it's quite a special dog in itself. And if she jumped through the window of a car, she'd be even more special. This is the first time she's done it. So, that's what I've just asked okay. We've also got another dog currently in service from Costa Rica, um, Dog with Apa, who's just about to be recommended, who's actually just been recommended for a Dickie Medal, PDSA for Gallantry. So he was serving in Costa Rica on one of the, on the marine protection vessels. In the middle of the night, he was on the deck, laying on the deck fast asleep, and um, three skiffs full of 12 pirates tried to take the vessel. Apa woke up alerted all the crew and actually stopped the pirates coming over the ship, kept them at bay until the crew all got up, obviously returned fire and actually the pirates actually got away without taking the ship. So this was then re referred to the, um, the PDSA that, and he's been now referred for a Dickin Medal, so we're really, really proud of um, APA. Okay, Tom. Okay, what you're going to see in a second now is the last part of the demonstration, which is what we call a standing guard. And uh, just hold there for a minute, Cam. Hold there, Darren. And we're going to see a standing guard. So he's going to go in for the attack. He's going to, he's going to obviously apprehend Cam. No one likes Cam anyway, to be honest with you. He's kind of a lesser brother. <laughs> so again, look for the bites. <laughs> He'll come out, the dog will apprehend. Darren will call the dog off. He'll put the dog into, the, to, into a stay. He'll then search Cam, because obviously we've got to make sure that the person we're arresting doesn't have any weapons concealed that can harm either the dog or himself, and he'll then do an escort back. Cam, come out. Do your run. Do your glory. Okay, Darren, when you're ready. 
So he'll stay in position until Darren gets in the command, regardless of what's said. So now off lead. Stop him. There you go. The dog takes the bite. Stand still, Cam. Dog comes back, goes into the sit and stay. Okay. Cam, if you adopt the search position now. This is where he's most vulnerable. <laughs> there we go, let's see him get up. Okay. Darren will do a conduct a full search now. <laughs> the reason they're both laughing is because if he waves his hand in front of Cam, the dog will re-attack. And we all know this is dangerous. Uh, but then he'll bite anywhere he wants to bite, which is why they're both laughing. <laughs> okay, so now we'll do the escort. So Cam will turn around. And under the direction of Darren, we'll move in the direction and he'll escort him back to a guard room or a base camp where we need to do it. And Cam, if you turn left. Now this dog will walk at heel and he won't go in to re-attack, he'll only guard, okay? But if Cam makes a move back at the handle or tries to run in again, the dog just attacks without command. Wow. Put him into the guard. Oh, that's not the guard. He's doing that because literally we've trained for months to do that and he would never, ever normally go in for a re-attack like that. He'll just do a standing guard. Providing Cam doesn't move, he won't attack. Normally. <laughs> okay, mate. Thank you very much. So what we tried to show this morning, is, uh, sorry, this afternoon, is just the discipline that's involved in regards to training these dogs and the different techniques um, we use in actually deploying them. Now, obviously, compared to a civilian home, some of these methods look quite extreme. I'm going to have a look at this one here. So I know it is, I think, 1,200 a night, 1,200 a night and as I said so my colleague stays here oh there's people here I'm not gonna put my camera on open so you can go in and have a look and are they all different um slightly, slightly different but okay. they are in pairs generally and that's why there's only one of each type open okay this is so cool the tiger's nice but it's just shallow it's about oh, as wide it? yeah the lounge area is about the width of the so this one is the two bed let me picture it from here it's a bit dark now but this is The two bed, this is bedroom one. It's really nice. Look at the nice view. And then let's go to bedroom two. Okay, this is the bathroom. And this is bedroom two. And then the view. This is nice. Imagine waking up to a lion at your window. So cool. It's really nice. This is such a nice view as well. It's really nice. Yeah. Imagine waking up. Very nice. Mm -hmm. 
I just went to go and look at the places to stay here like the mini cottages and they're very 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 nice um, so I know the prices are if it's two of you it's £1,090 but you have to book by the weekend which is today's Wednesday before Sunday and if it's four of you it's like £250 each I actually think it's a great deal I took a picture of the um, itinerary so you do get to feed the cats they do offer you free course meals um, free meals a day so I think yeah like if you can see my background imagine staying here let me just I'll do so imagine staying here for the night and then waking up and there is a lion at the front or just in front of your window guys so you never guess what's happened battery's low but my car charger has stopped working and my battery for phone has five percent so i don't know how i'm getting home today i've asked them if i can charge my phone so my phone's with them inside but can you imagine guys like what a day for my car charger to stop working me being in ashford and having five percent on my phone like how else am I going to get home plus it's country roads as well so I was kind of hoping that I could follow the cars out and you know drive to London whatever but now I feel like I'm going to be the last car left and no one else is going to guide me in the way but Jesus of course 100% I don't want to drive when it's too dark as well because those country roads when it's dark yeah not not the one but yeah I just pray I get home safely with a fully charged phone or maybe just like at least 25 to 30% because at this rate they close at 6.30, it's 6.32 um, and I only just figured when I got back to the car which was like 20 past 6. But yeah, what a day, what, a, what an ending. Well, this is kind of interesting to be honest with you so I will keep you updated, probably just leave it, uh, probably just type something at the end of the video but yes, by the grace of God I will get home safe. Bye.